Hey, thanks everybody for joining me today. I'm coming to you uh, from uh, Custom B&B. Um, my name's Meredith and um, I wanted to do a uh, presentation today talking about how to assess um, uh, cash flow positive um, real estate. So how to analyze the numbers, but what are the numbers that you need to know about to be able to do an assessment of a potential uh, investment property to work out whether it can be a positive cash flow um, investment property. Um, as I said, my name's Meredith and I run a Airbnb short-term rental uh, property management company called Custom B&B. And we work with uh, property investors to try and maximise their uh, cash flow on their investment properties so that they can uh, you know, have positive cash flow investment properties. And then we manage all the day-to-day -day ins and outs of the property management uh, on the short-term rental platforms or OTAs as they're called, which is online travel agencies. Uh, and we also do direct take direct bookings so that guests can avoid um, paying fees for um, online travel agencies. So that's a bit of who we are. Uh, so let's launch in though to uh, to today's presentation and to the numbers. It is really numbers dense. Um, I've got a slideshow ready for you, so hopefully it kind of helps. Um, lay out the numbers and gives you an example um, to understand what the numbers are that you need to be able to do a, a positive cash flow real estate deal. Let's launch in. All right. So we're going to crunch the numbers and the first step is looking at the purchase costs. So the first thing you want to know is what the buy price or the purchase price could potentially be. Um, you then are going to look at how much cash you need to put in yourself um, as a deposit and then how much you're going to need to borrow if at anything at all. Uh, traditionally a 20% deposit has meant that you haven't had to pay a lender's mortgage insurance and you borrow 80% of the buy price from the bank it gives you a total 100% of the buy price. Closing costs uh, we estimate them to be 5% of the buy price. Closing costs will include things like lawyer fees, stamp duty, and the bank fees. So 5% of the buy price gives you a, a good estimation of your costs. So crunching the numbers further, step one continued further. So if you're going to set up on an, an Airbnb, uh, you're going to need to think about uh, additional costs such as furnishing the property. Uh, furnishing a property will, and the cost associated with furnishing the property will depend on the type of property that you're going to fur per, uh, furnish. Uh, is it going to be a high-end luxury um, property and end feel that you want to have, or do you already have um, furniture that you know sitting in your in your garage that you've been wanting to put somewhere for a while? Um, are you going to buy your furniture secondhand off Gumtree and Facebook or are you going to go and buy brand new property? Are you going to use a turnkey um, uh, organisation that can just deliver a full house worth of furniture and set it all up for you so you don't have to worry about it at all? Um, and they're really nice because you can pick um, the design that you like and you want to have for your, for your property. We work on about $10,000 for a two bedroom apartment. So we're, in this example and in, in, in this um, number crunching process, we're gonna use 1.5% of the buy price. The other costs that you might wanna consider are any renovation or home improvement costs. This will depend on the type of property that you've bought. Um, it could just be a coat of paint on a older property or some new, um, carpet, but that's really going to depend on your property. So we've left that um, blank uh, and not a, a figure that we're going to factor into our crunching of the numbers today. Step two is looking at the annual income minus the annual expenses. So this is going to be the um, 
give you your annual cash flow. So when you're looking at an Airbnb property, you're, you're going the numbers to work out the income. You're looking at your Airbnb annual a uh, nightly rate. Sorry, multiply that by the number of days in the year, 365 days. Multiply that by your occupancy percentage. And you worked out your occupancy percentage by looking at web uh, software like AirDNA, um, doing your comparisons in the area. Um, you're going to look at your annual nightly rate by looking at comparisons in the area and again using different kinds of software um, to help you assess what that nightly rate could be. When you're looking at your annual expenses, um, you need to factor in Airbnb running costs like your utilities because you have to put on the gas and the electricity, Netflix and internet. You will still be paying your body corporate fees, your insurance, taxes, council rates, loan repayments, but you will be paying some Airbnb fees and you will need to pay a property manager commissions if you use a property manager. Uh, a property manager. You're also going to want to factor in your maintenance costs and we use um, about 0.5% of the buy price to just put some money aside to cover these costs. You're either going to be building up a bucket of money to be able to fund future costs or you're going to be able to have the right amount of money set aside um, during the year to cover any maintenance issues. All right, let's go on to step three, which is your profit analysis. And this is where we look at your gross rental return, which is also known as yield. You assess this by looking at the gross annual rent divided by the purchase price and times that by 100. You then might want to look at your numbers in a different way, looking at the cash on cash returned. So you're looking at the annual cash flow divided by the cash required and times that by 100. You also want to consider your estimated annual growth. So that's your anticipated annual market appreciation as a percentage. Multiply that by your purchase price to give you the estimated growth. Or you might want to look at your estimated annual profit. Annual cash flow plus your estimated growth gives you your 12 month profit. You're going to divide that by the cash required and multiply that by 100 to give you a net profit percentage. Now this all looks great, but it's going to make more sense when you put some real life figures up to it. So let's dive into an example. We'll do an Airbnb example first. And I've um, chosen a property in a two bedroom apartment in the Docklands, Victoria for this example. So let's look at the purchase and the setup costs. We're going to say the purchase price is $700,000 and the cash that you're going to need to get in is $140,000, so 20%. You're going to borrow 40, 80%, so that's $560,000. 5% closing costs is $35,000. And your setup costs? of 1.5% is 10,500. So we can work we can now see what our total purchase costs in cash is. So our cash required is 185,500. Our total borrowings required is 56,000. Sorry, try that again, 560,000. So the total amount that we need to be able to purchase this property and set it up for Airbnb is $745,000. So now we're going to look at the annual income minus that by the expenses to give you our annual cash flow. So for an Airbnb, I know in that area that you can get an average nightly rate of $250,000 per night. So try that again, $250 per night. We're going to multiply that by 365 days of the year. And I know that you can get an 80% occupancy, not in COVID times, um, in the Docklands area. So we know that then that the annual income can be $73,000 uh, per year. So in our experience, so our annual expenses are around about $600 per month to cover your running costs of an Airbnb. So that's utilities and internet and, and Netflix. Multiply that by the 12 months of the year gives you a $7,200 for the year. 
Now we're going to group all the body court fees, insurance and taxes and council rates together and, and estimate those to be about 1% of the buy price. So it gives us 7,000 for the year. Now I know that your body corporate fees might be more than that if you have lifts and pools in your complex. But for this example, we're just going to use 7,000. You can tweak that depending on, on your property. But when you tweak it, it's going to be the same for um, an Airbnb example or a long-term leasing example. Your annual loan repayments, we're estimating a 4%, um, your loan will be a 4% interest rate and over a 25 year loan period. And we're estimating interest only for this example. So it'll give you 22,400 uh, for the year. Now I know that you can get lower interest rates and that you will move to P&I at some point in time. Um, so there are all the various what you have to think about um, on a long term basis. Airbnb fees um, are calculated at 3.3% um, of the uh, income. So that gives us an ex uh, 2,409 in this example. 20% property manager commissions um, is calculated at 73, so it's minusing um, your Airbnb fees away from your annual income and then times that by by 20%. So your property manager would get $14,118 across the year for managing your property. So you can now look at what your total annual expenses will be. Oh, sorry, I forgot the, the uh, maintenance budget of 3,500. In total, you can see that all your expenses are going to be 56,627. But what your annual cash flow is going to be is 16,375. So that's income minus expenses to give you the cash flow. 16,000 positive cash flow, pretty good. All right, let's crunch the numbers and do some analysis. So we know to get the yield, it's our annual income divided by your buy price times 100 to give you, um, which gives you 10% in this example. Your annual cash on cash return is your annual cash flow, which is 16,373 divided by the cash that you had to put in, multiply that by 100 to give you 8.8% cash on cash return. Your estimated annual growth now where I know in this area that you can estimate the annual growth to be about 3% per year. Now that'll vary depending on what, which area you're buying in. So 3% of 700,000, your buy price, gives you $21,000 for the year. So let's work out the estimated annual profit. You need your annual cash flow plus your estimated annual growth that gives us a total of 37,373 in a 12-month period. You divide that by the cash that you put in, your 185,500, and then you multiply that by 100, and that gives you a 20% net profit on your investment for the year. All right, is that good or bad? Well, let's compare it to a long-term lease. We've got to crunch the numbers. You're still looking at your purchase costs. Your buy price, 100% of your buy price, you're looking at 20% cash to, to deposit, 80% um, to borrow. You're still looking at 5% of your buy price to uh, make the purchase. Your uh, annual income and minus your expenses, so your annual cash flow for a long-term lease is assessed considering these um, these items. Your rental income, so what you can get, a weekly rental income um, across the year. So uh, you'll need to have a look at what the occupancy can be um, across the year. So will it, be, will it be filled 52 weeks of the year or are you going to have maybe, you know, a couple of weeks where you're not going to have a tenant um, because that's what your um, rental market is like in your area. You you don't have to worry about the full utilities of um, gas and electricity. Your tenant will pay for that. You're still going to have to consider body court fees, insurance, 
taxes, council rates, your loan. You'll have a property manager probably, and that's about 9%. Um, and you're still going to have to consider your maintenance costs of 0.5% of the buy price. So let's go through. Um, step three is going to be looking at the same analysis as we did with an Airbnb, but we'll obviously be using different numbers, different amounts, same number types. Okay, long-term rental investment property. Let's have a look at an example. Purchase costs. 140,000 to still get in, uh, deposit, cash, 560,000 borrowing from the bank, um, it gives you the total 700,000 buy price. Your closing costs, remember they 5% of the buy price is 35,000 in this example. So the total cash you need is 175,000 to get in. You're still gonna be borrowing 560,000, you're gonna have a total cost for the make the purchase of 735,000. So let's assess the annual income minus the annual expenses to give you your annual cash flow. Now I know in this area that you can get a rental income of about $560 per week uh, and there's an occupancy of about 50 weeks per year. You could probably even push that up to 52 weeks. But for this example, we're gonna use 50 weeks and $28,000 income um, annually. We're going to estimate you're going to have some utility costs of about 800 just to cover your water uh, because the owner needs to cover water in these properties. We're going to do the 1% of the buy price to cover your body, court fees, insurance, taxes and council rates. So we're still using the same amount of 7,000. Your annual loan repayments of 4% over 25 years is 22,400. Your 9% Property management fees is 28,000, so that's your annual income. By 9% gives you 2,520 uh, for the year. And your maintenance cost will still be 3,500. So we can add up all our annual expenses to give 36,220 per annum. So when we go annual income minus annual expenses gives your annual cash flow of minus 8,000 220 for the year. So let's crunch the numbers a bit further and do some analysis. Your gross rental returns are your yield is your annual cash flow of 25,000 divided by your buy price of 700,000 times by 100. That gives you a yield of 4%. Your cash on cash return, so the cash that you've got left over, it's minus 8,220 and you divide that by the cash that you put in, 175,000, and times that by 100, and that gives you a minus 4.7% cash on cash return. Your estimated annual growth which is the same, is 3% um, times your buy price of 700,000. It gives you 21,000 for the year. So now we can, we've got all the numbers to do your estimated annual profit. So your annual cash flow of minus 8,220 plus your 21,000 uh, growth, it gives you $12,780,000 for the year. You're going to divide that by the $750,000 cash to put in, times that by 100, gives you 7.3% um, net profit. So let's line them up side by side, Airbnb versus long term. Your yield, 10% versus 4%. Cash and cash return, 8.8% versus minus 4.7%. And your growth is the same, but your annual profit is 20% versus 7.3%. It's certainly something to consider for your property. Uh, and certainly something um, I'm passionate about and I think that can benefit so many um, property investors. If you would like to have a chat with us about this um, and have a free appraisal of your property, don't hesitate to give us a call um, or um, contact us via our website and um, we'd love to chat with you about how your property might perform um, as a short-term rental. Thanks.